Today we come to the third cardinal virtue, essential moral virtues. And let's try to reflect on this, again, not as something that is abstract and purely theoretical, but something really that is so, so fundamental to our personal development. This is one of the four essential components of our personality. Today we're dealing with fortitude, which we could also call strength of character, the ability to undergo suffering, or in a particular way, endurance. And there's three things I'd like to to look at in this virtue of fortitude. The very first thing is that we could sometimes have the picture of the the strong person, the person with fortitude, as a kind of a superman or superwoman, invulnerable. And in fact, the opposite is the case. Fortitude requires vulnerability. For example, the angels have no fortitude. They can't be strong in that sense because they can't suffer. So vulnerability is an essential part of fortitude because through fortitude, we we allow ourselves to undergo suffering for a greater good. Suffering is never an end in itself. We're not masochistic. And we know all all of us Christians must be ready, ready to suffer even death for the great, the greatest good possible, which is our faith and our love of God. So it doesn't mean in any, any way that we are f- super fearless. Or, only the person who doesn't have anything to lose doesn't fear. And that is the person who doesn't love anything. Whereas we love many things. We love this life. We love our own lives. We love the lives of others, our families, etc. Many, many things which are very, very good and which we would fear to love. I think a lovely example of this is St. Thomas More, who, when he was approaching martyrdom, he was genuinely afraid because he was a he was a wonderful individual who loved life and who loved many aspects of his life. He knew how to enjoy life very well. And so for that reason, he did have a fear of martyrdom. Only somebody like those who 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 would have a what we call a death wish, who really hate their life, would would just willingly, without batting an eyelid, give up their life. Sometimes, unfortunately, we see that in, in suicide bombings and so on. And it does appear that very often the unfortunate person who, who does that has really no li- love of his own life, let alone the lives of his victims. That's the very first thing. The second thing is endurance. Since most things in our lives, most of the things that cause us to suffer, really can't really be solved, or perhaps only a little bit. They take a, a chronic illness, persecutions of our faith, really, for the most part, we just have to endure that, a difficulty in our marriage or in a family situation. And fortitude is very, very important here because it is the virtue, that kind of strength, where we endure essentially without letting that thing get us down too much. It would get us down to some degree, but fortitude allows us not to get us down excessively. So the way one person put it was this way, the patient man is not the one who does not flee from evil, but the one who does not allow himself to be made inordinately sorrowful thereby. So inordinate sorrow, to be too sad at a chronic illness, too sad at losing financial stability, too sad at being persecuted for something. No, sad, yeah, but within reason, we put it that way. I remember reading of a fellow, young fellow in his early 20s, who just finished his engineering degree. It's a very promising future ahead of him. But then he was diagnosed with uh, MS, multiple sclerosis. And he handled very well, in very holy fashion, and he eventually died of it. But the way he explained it was, it is like a, a guest, an uninvited guest has moved into my apartment and I just have to live with him. And that's that. The wonderful thing, obviously, he was saddened, but not inordinately. He got on with life and did very, very well, even as an engineer, in fact. Thirdly, and the lastly, daring. In our society, I think it's fair enough to say we have an obsession with security, health and safety. Now, they're very important things. But again, not to excess, because very often health and safety or security are treated as if nothing but nothing is worth suffering for. That safety and essentially comfort are the greatest goods possible. And so nothing is worth suffering, discomfort, or uh, uh, danger. We had a wonderful example here at the beginning of last year when Ukraine was invaded by Russia. And people 
particularly one particular country, uh, felt that, well, President Zelensky would, of course, flee. He would run away from Ukraine, he would stay safe and guarantee himself a comfortable life abroad. And I think a lot of people perhaps were taken aback, shocked, when he said, no, my country's freedom is worth suffering for. It's worth even risking my life for. It's really countercultural, especially for us in the in the West, where we are very hooked on health and safety, comfort and security, all these things. Another great political leader, this time Winston Churchill, he wrote this wonderful little kind of stanza, caring more than others think is wise, risking more than others think is safe, dreaming more than others think is practical, expecting more than others think is possible. And he, in fact, was a man of great actual personal daring. When you just read about his life, it's quite, quite remarkable. So the practical consequence for us is let's push the boat out. Let us not consider health and safety and comfort and security to be the highest goals. They're important, but they're not the highest. We have, we have things like our faith, love for others, our country, love for our country, which are actually greater goals. And at a very practical thing, Ele Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of the President Roosevelt from early in the last century, she said, do one thing every day that scares you. And that's good advice. And that's daring. And that's fortitude. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.